One day I'm looking at my phone, I get a text from either the manager or the coach saying you're called in to come and play against the first team tomorrow. They want to do a little bit of an 11 v 11. Yo, 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 what's going on Team Twitter? I hope you're all super well. It's kind of early in the morning, I guess, and that sun is killing me. Now, every Saturday for the past 12 weeks or so has been game day, which is why I'm a little bit, eh. You know, Saturday is my favorite day. Game day, I love playing games. That's why I love football. And then I have to go to the gym. Look, I'm still keen to go to the gym because I'm always looking to improve myself, not just on the field. Off the field as well, whether that's mentally, working on my muscles, stretching, anything like that. These are the sort of things that you gotta do. I would do it a bit later, but I wanted to just get up and smash it out. I haven't done this ever. This way I have more time in the day. I also have to work on the program throughout today because it's being released later on tonight, which I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, let's head off to the gym. I'm feeling it now. I'm up, I'm ready to go, ready to put in that work. Let's get to work. And I just realized I forgot my headphones as well. Fuck. Maybe I should just stick to going at nighttime. Now my big concern is I get to the gym and there's a load of people and none of the equipment is free. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that that is not the case. I really dislike going when there's a ton of people. I just want to get in, jump on whichever weights I want to do, whichever bench I want to do. Please, let's hope. Before we get into the gym session, I want to say a massive thank you to OneFootball who are sponsoring this video. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app with the Premier League coming up. It's the one you want to download with all the transfer news, fixtures, and results, as well as all the exclusive stats on there. Now, getting into the gym program, this is a plank on a, oh, I forget what this ball is called, a Swiss ball, and I have the weight. I showed you guys how I got on there. This is a side plank on the Swiss ball, again, showing you how I actually get on it. And man, it's so difficult on the Swiss ball compared to normal ground. So I like to use two hands just to make sure I get my balance. And then when I feel like I've got it, I put one hand on the other hip, make sure I'm opening up and then really just holding myself there for as long as I can until I fall. Here we got some deadlifts and it's extremely difficult on this day. It was hot, it was sweaty, it was the morning and I couldn't lift more than 80 kilos. Every time I put the bar down, my hands were almost slipping off and I'd say it was almost dangerous. So I had to just stick at 80 kilos and, you know, do my best there. Here, push-ups with the weight on my back, that's how I get it on and then just pump out as many as you can until failure. Another great exercise I absolutely love doing. So difficult day in the office, but you gotta get this stuff done. Well, I thought I'd try going to the gym in the morning and I just don't really think it's for me. Football training, I can go anytime. Put me on it for 6 a.m. 9 p.m., 10.30 p.m., 2 p.m., anytime I'll get there and do it and be able to perform, but I just, I don't know. I felt like I compared this morning session to a nighttime session at the gym and it just didn't feel as good. In the sense that maybe I didn't have enough energy, that actual vibe didn't feel right. I know what it was, as you heard in the commentary, it was extremely hot this morning in the gym, so when I was doing deadlifts, I couldn't do 100 kilos. Because like I said, every time I went to lift up, my fingers would slip, and that never happens at night time. So, Look, if I ever do this again where maybe I want to get a double session in, I'll do the football aspect in the morning to get that out of the way, and that kind of gives me the rest of the day to plan out when I want to go to the gym. I think that's the best way to approach things in the future. We're all different. Someone messaged me saying, Sheldon, you need to go in the morning. Maybe that worked for him, but find out what works for you. If you're someone that needs to go to the gym in the morning, go in the morning so you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. I don't put the gym off to night time because I'm busy or I can't be bothered. I feel like that's when I can perform best there. So, just a little thing, now I got a protein shake, let's jump to that. Whoo, there it is. Well, it's not that amazing, is it? It's just this protein powder over here, which, you know, it's nothing special at all. And then I just put some milk, put it in the Nutribullet, and bang, I got myself a protein shake. So I need to have that. I've only been home for about five minutes, if that. It's about 15 minutes since my workout, so good to get that in as soon as possible. And yeah, need the calories, need the protein, so cheers. So right now, I'm cooking up some tuna pasta. It's in the microwave. You guys can see it on screen. It's actually in the fry pan for you guys. It's really weird. But as you guys know, you fry the pasta. Apparently, someone said that when you put stuff in the microwave, it zaps the nutrients out of it. I've never heard of that, it might be true. Let me know down in the comments, I'm not sure. But I love my tuna pasta, so I'm gonna eat this. I got a little bit more work to do. As you guys can see, my lunch is done. It's looking good. I've also got my one liter water bottle, which I always try and have throughout the day. Fill it up a couple times, make sure I keep hydrated throughout the day. So, so important, I think a lot of us forget about it. 
so many years, I reckon I missed out on it. Just not thinking water, water, I need water, I need water. It's one of those things that's so easy to forget, but if you can have a one liter or a two liter bottle by your desk or wherever you sit most, then you'll find you'll be able to keep hydrated much easier than usual. Who's calling me? Staying hydrated is so key. It's one of the things that gives you energy. And for a period there, I said to dad, this was before the 365 day challenge. I was like, man, I, I just don't have energy or whatever it was. And he said, are you drinking enough water? I went, probably not. So now that I've started to, you know, smash this out two, three times a day, I feel like I'm more energized. I can go out and do things and really perform my best, not just in training sessions, but games as well. So that's my little rant. So with lunch done, I don't have a whole lot to do for the rest of the day. I mean, this weekend is for me to relax and not do anything too intense. I did the gym session this morning. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise. I couldn't push myself to that 100 kilo, 105 kilo, 110 kilo mark on those deadlifts because that would have really worked me. So look, it's annoying because I wanna get out on the field, I wanna work, but I've been non-stop. From November of 2016, I've been in season. Now a lot of you guys will say, Sheldon at Crawley, you didn't do a whole lot of training. We did three, four times a week, but in saying that, there's never been a period since November 2016 where I've been able to take some time off. And look, I love the game, and I'm sure you guys do too. You always want to be around it, you want to be amongst it, you want to be training, whether that's in the gym, doing stretching, analyzing games, practicing on the field most of all, but you need to rest your body as well. Some time away from football is always good and you look at the top players. I follow Jesse Lingard on Instagram. He's the only one who I've really seen. He's been over in LA enjoying himself. Daniel Sturridge I follow on Instagram. He's been in LA enjoying himself during this off season and so they take themselves away from football for a couple weeks and the benefit of that is it recharges your muscles and mentally you're able to recover and recharge ready to go for the new season. Now I haven't had that. Is it a bad thing? Not really because I love being around football but I think I do need it and the season's coming to a close. We'll see what opportunities come up then. I might be straight back in to training with another team and if I am that will be a professional team so I think I'll be able to mentally be ready for that. So we'll see what happens but off season it's a time to you know just relax and I haven't had that for a while. And before that, what I want to get into in a minute, there was another period like this where I was two years and a little bit of constant training. I was with Manly United, then I was with Sydney FC. Back to Manly United, then with Western Sydney Wanderers. And that was two years straight. Then I went from Wanderers to Manly, and then I got injured and was out for eight months. Hence why I'm just taking these couple of days just to relax from football, as much as I want to get out to the field and do some training, I'm just going to resist, not do it. Get back to it again on Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet whether I want to go to the park on Monday. I guess we'll see how my body is then and go from there. But now, something I want to get into, which is the core of this video. Let's get to it. So, how did I actually get into a professional sides youth team? Now this video isn't going to be talking about how I actually got there, the contacts, the agents, or however I actually managed to get the trials for these clubs. I want to just talk on the mental aspect. So I'm going to take you back to about year 11 or 12 in school when I was 17 years old and I was sitting in this room and we had these people come in and talk to us about how to improve our grades and get these top marks and I'm there going, man this is so boring. But I decided to listen. And in that little lecture, they said one thing that really stuck in my mind. Top students in Australia are getting high marks by writing 99.95 on their wall, wherever it may be, which basically means getting an A in your GCSEs or whatever, just getting a high mark in a test, basically. And so I listened to that, I went, well, I don't really care about school. How can I apply this to football? And so then it struck me, I thought, okay, they're setting a goal and then they're surrounding themselves with that goal. So I thought, you know what? My goal right now is to make a National Youth League site. So I grabbed A4 pieces of paper and I wrote National Youth League. In the National Youth League, it goes Australia, the number one division, and then each team within the A-League has their own youth team. So I really wanted to make it that. I wrote it everywhere around the house. In fact, I can almost remember every single spot. One right there. One there. One there. One there. One there. One there for while I'm taking a shower, I can see it. One there. One there. And one over there. At the start, I was always like, oh, National Youth League. Oh, National Youth League. But then I didn't even recognize it, but I knew subconsciously Consciously, National Youth League was on my mind. What was I going to do that day to help me get closer to my goal? Was it go to the gym? Was it eat enough food? Was it to hydrate? Was it to, most importantly, train on the field? This helped massively. I still remember the day I got the call from the coach of the Youth League team for Sydney FC, and my brother actually picked me up from my training session that night, and I said, yo, lock, Lockie, lock, Lockie's calling me. He's calling me. I let it ring for a second, like, all right, 
figured out. I'm like, hey, how you going? Blah, blah, blah. And we talk and he offers me a spot in the youth league squad as a reserve player. So basically the youth league has a squad of 16 and then they take train on players who train with the squad and if anyone gets injured you play in the team. Now I never got to play but I got to train and be part of an amazing environment. Going through just a few of the players, Lachlan Scott probably one of my better mates in the team. He's on a professional deal with Wanderers. Charles Lachalingui, again closer mate, professional deal with Sydney FC. Aaron Calver, Sydney FC. Bay Antonio just signed a deal in Cyprus on a professional deal. George Timotheu just signed for Schalke. Ryan Grant dropped down a few times to train with us from the first team. Dylan Caden, who actually subbed off Alessandro Del Piero on his A-League debut. He's now over at Santa Barbara University, I believe. Don't quote me on that, amazing player. But being in this environment was amazing. And on top of that, one day I'm looking at my phone, I get a text from either the manager or the coach saying you're called in to come and play against the first team tomorrow. They want to do a little bit of an 11 v 11. In that game, I didn't play too much. It was more so the first team youth players who were playing, but I did manage to get like 20 minutes, I'd say, maybe 25. And I played as a right winger. Alex Gersbach marked me. If you guys don't know who Alex Gersbach is, he is basically a soccer room now, plays for the national team. He's playing over in Norway, I believe, for Rosenberg. And on top of that, you had all the other first name players. Bernie Abini was another one. He's now playing for Vancouver Whitecaps, but oh man, it was just an amazing experience. But what I take away from all of that is I was in this environment where I now see players succeeding and I look at them and I congratulate them. I have nothing against them at all. And I don't sit here and go, oh, he signed there. Why aren't I there? But it gives me the mindset that I can go on to achieve. Again, I'm not bringing these players down, but I was at this level competing with them, training with them four times a week. I know I'm up to it, and that's what gives me confidence, but far out. Being in a professional environment like that, it was something else. It, it really was. So again, if you want me to do the video where I take you through how I actually got this opportunity, because the year after that, I was obviously at Western Sydney Wanderers, let me know down in the comments. I hope I gave you guys a bit of insight and help as well about how to actually achieve something. It's not all about going out there and trialing and being the best player possible. It's a mental game as well. It's not just mental on the field, it's mental off it as well. Are you mentally strong enough to go through setbacks and different things that might happen off the field? So. Team Tweety, I'm signing out. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Subscribe again. Enjoy your journey. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.